Professor, thank you for being with us at the Kiev Post. Thank you for having me. Uh, maybe you could tell everybody a few words about your own background. Sure. My name is Dennis Novi. I'm a professor of economics at the University of Warwick. And my area of specialty is international economics and international trade. And I have a PhD from the University of Cambridge. That's fantastic. So when you're looking at what's going on today with the Russian economy, what is the UC? The Russian economy is suffering. Um, we don't quite know what exactly is going on with the Russian economy, mainly because the data are not there or not reliable that the Russian government is providing. But it's probably shrinking to the tune of about 4% in 2022. And it is projected to further shrink in 2023. Inflation is very high as well in Russia, uh, as, as high as in Western countries, or a bit higher even. And clearly, people are suffering. Real incomes are down. And so when you look at all this, uh, what is that you see as a historic example of something similar perhaps that's happened? Right. So, so the key thing about war is to understand that really this is a race of economics. There are lots of facets to the war, politics and so on, but I want to focus on the economics. And there you really have to understand this is a, a race of resources and a race of really being able to keep up the military production. So if you think about, say, World War II, the reason Germany lost in the end um, economically was that Germany just couldn't keep up war production. Germany had reconfigured its entire economy to produce output that was used for military uh, activity. Now, uh, at some point, Germany wasn't able to keep up with the resources that the Allies had. So much uh, equipment was destroyed and so on. So at the end of the day, this is a key decisive factor. If you look at the history of war, who has the largest economy? Now, that brings us to Russia. Uh, Russia is the largest country in Europe by a mile in terms of population is about 145 million, 150 million people but clearly not by the size of the economy. The Russian economy is of a low middle income economy. Um, the size of the Russian economy is smaller than the size of the Italian economy and Italy only has about 60 million people. So there's a bunch of countries in Europe, Germany, uh, France, UK, that are much larger than the Russian economy. So that's important to keep in perspective. The economic might of Europe and let alone United States is by far bigger. Now, um, that's the way to think about the general situation. And then you really have to think about exports versus imports. I think this is an important point, Jason. Right. So um, on exports, imports. So the, the discussion in the West has really focused about Russian oil and Russian gas exports. And that's very understandable because consumers, especially in Europe, and governments were worried about not being able to keep their, their houses warm during the winter. There might have been bad uh, consequences for industrial production and so on. But that's a very Eurocentric view. If you think about this in terms of the war effort, you shouldn't worry about exports of oil and gas. You should think about imports. What, what are the things that Russia can buy from foreign countries? So why does that matter? Well. Um, the Russian economy just cannot produce some of the supplies or items you need for warfare, in particular high-tech products. These are things that uh, are imported to a large extent from Western economies. And therefore, the sanctions are absolutely crucial to control the imports. Think about it this way. Imagine Russia cannot import anything, but they can sell oil and gas. That would be super happy for Western economies because they can sell and, OK, fine, we can use the oil and gas. But when we send some money back, but Russia can't do anything with the money, right? So sitting on a bunch of greenbacks that are uh, squirreled away in some bank vault is not useful for the Russian government because they can't do anything. So the whole point of exporting is it allows you to import. And if you cut that import channel, because that's what's really crucial for war production, that's when you, then when you can hurt the Russian economy the most and try to undermine their military operation. Now, um, of course, the Russian government can still get the money and do other things with it. For example, gifts to lots of friends all over the world, right? I mean, it doesn't mean that the Russian government can just buy things abroad. They can also, uh, like imports, they can actually give gifts and buy political favors and so on. So the money that they receive is useful to them. Let me be clear. 
but we need to focus a lot more on restricting their imports. That is the crucial thing. And that's actually also hap what happened in World War II, to go back to that analogy, the Allies were never particularly worried about German exports. They were very worried about German imports because German imports were crucial for the German economy and more production. And it's exactly the same way we should think about Russia today. That's fascinating, Professor. Well, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you.